Hello and welcome to the Our Dad Stamps podcast. My name is Pete West and I've spent half a lifetime collecting stamps and more than 10 years buying and selling them. In these podcasts I want to share some personal stories, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way and maybe encourage a few non-philatelists to take up this fascinating and absorbing hobby. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Welcome to another Our Dad Stamps podcast. My name's Pete. And I'm Sheila. And what we're talking about today, Pete? Well, today I thought we'd talk about the origins of stamps. We've all talked about, or we have talked about the penny black and how it was the first stamp in the world. But what happened in other countries? How did they get going? So today's podcast is about the first 10 postal entities that started producing stamps. And I say postal entities rather than countries, because some of them weren't done by a country. They were done by regions or towns before the country got involved. So, as I said, we all know the Penny Black was the first postage stamp in the world. And that was issued in May 19, uh, 1940, May 1840. And there were actually 68 million Penny Blacks printed. And they were all printed before anybody else printed a stamp. The first place to issue a stamp after that was actually New York State, or New York City rather, which came up with the idea in 1842, so it was some two years later before anybody else jumped on the bandwagon. And funnily enough, this was brought about by an Englishman. He came over to America, I believe it was 1841, and thought the postal system in New York was absolutely atrocious and inefficient. And having experienced what it was like in England with the Penny Black, thought he could do the same thing. So his name was Henry Thomas Windsor, and he teamed up with an American called Alexander Gregg. And between them, they started a postal system in New York. It cost three cents to post a letter, only within the city of New York. And it was known as Gregg's Post. And having set it up within three months, the U.S postal system bought it out from them and it still only operated in New York but it was no longer privately owned. So I thought it's quite interesting that an Englishman copies the idea from Roland Hill, goes out to New York, sets up a business, runs it for about three months and then sells it off again. That's a good bit of entrepreneurship I think. The next one to, to come along and this is actually the first country after Britain that produced a stamp. It's quite surprising. Uh, well, it's surprising to me anyway. It's Brazil. In March 1843, Brazil produced three stamps, which are commonly known as bullseyes. And the reason they're known as bullseyes is that they are a blank stamp with, a, with an oval in the middle. And inside the oval is the value of the stamp. And that's it. And they were produced in pairs with one of the stamp being upside down. So when you looked at the two together, it gave the impression of the eyes of a bull. And that's why they're called bull's eyes. And they were in three different values, one at 30 race, one at 60 and one at 90. And that was for different weights or different distances of travel. Bearing in mind how big Brazil is, uh, it's not surprising that it cost a lot more to send from one end of Brazil to the other than it did within within one town. The interesting thing about the, the design of the stamps was the postal authority in Brazil decided not to use the portrait of, of their emperor, Emperor Pedro II, because they thought it would be disrespectful when the stamp was cancelled to disfigure the face of the emperor. And so uh, the design of just the numbers was used. Next in line for producing a stamp was actually three cantons of Switzerland. A canton is, is a region, basically, but they were like autonomous regions at the time. And the regions of Zurich, Geneva and Basel, or Baal, depending on your pronunciation, each separately produced their own stamps, which were initially to be used solely in that district. And they were the basic designs of, in Zurich again, it was just numbers used. 
in Geneva it was the town coat of arms and in Basel it was the crest of a, a dove. The only interesting point about these two stamps is that the, the one from Basel, the Basel dove, was the first ever stamp to be produced in three different colours. It had a crimson crest with a white dove in the middle of it, blue round the outside and black writing. So it was the first one to use three different colours, which was quite complicated but well, well liked at the time. By 1847, the United States of America had got their act together and started producing stamps for the whole country. For the previous few years, there were several municipalities that had produced their own stamp. But it wasn't, as I said, it wasn't until 1847 that the USA produced a stamp recognised throughout the country. And there was two. There was five cents, which had a picture of Benjamin Franklin on the front, and a ten cents, which had George Washington. There's an interesting note at this point. In Britain, they used, the penny black was obviously black when it first came out. And within a year, they decided that black was not a good colour to use for stamps because it was hard to see the postmark. And yet, each of the countries I've mentioned so far, their first stamp was always in black. And each of the countries subsequently decided that it wasn't a good colour. So I'm not sure why they didn't learn from Britain's mistake but they kept on working with black stamps. It could be that black ink was the most readily available ink, and so it was easy to produce. But it was only the one from Basel that I mentioned that really used any colour up until much later. The next country I come to is, is an interesting one, in Mauritius. In uh, September 1847, Mauritius produced two stamps, a penny orange and a tuppenny blue and they were produced by a local printer. And on those stamps, it was a picture of Queen Victoria with writing around the outside and the value in the bottom. But instead of writing post paid, he inscribed it as post office. And it wasn't until a whole load of these stamps had been sold that they realized their mistake and destroyed them. But it meant that the very first stamp of Mauritius is actually an error and very few of them survived. It is thought that only 12 of the penny oranges still exist and 12 of the Tutney blues still exist out of the original run of 240. One of the reasons for this, or it was believed one of the reasons for this is that in Mauritius, at the time when the stamps were issued, the governor had a, a grand ball Lady Gom, who was the governor's wife, had organised a ball and she invited all the, the local dignitaries and important people of Mauritius. And it is thought that she used a large proportion of those stamps to post out her invites. And all the invites went out to these people and because they needed to take the invite along to the ball to gain entry, it is thought that most of them just took the invite out of the envelope and threw the envelope away. And so very few of those stamps exist now. And they are very, very collectible. Most of them are actually now owned by museums. There's very few in private hands. But yeah, it's a, a different story. After Mauritius, we then get to the next few countries which in 1849 we had stamps from France, from Belgium and from Bavaria all following the format of their predecessors where there were a couple of issues to cover different distances or different weights of packages. The French stamps was slightly unusual, it had a picture of Ceres, I think it's pronounced that way, who is the Roman goddess of harvest and they produced their stamps just after the, the revolution, the first revolution in 1848. And it was thought that that represented the French Republic better than any other figure. The Belgium stamp had an image of King Leopold I, but the stamp has been nicknamed the Epaulettes stamps because the picture of him was in full military regalia and the most striking feature on the whole of the stamp is the huge great epaulets that are on his shoulders. So they've become known as the epaulets set. 
And then the Bavarian stamps were going back to the very basic. It was just a number in the middle of a stamp with a frame around it, and that was it. So the only unusual thing about the Bavarian stamps was that the paper was embedded with silk to try and avoid forgery. By the time we get to 1850 now, then there was altogether 11 different places that produced stamps during 1850. Spain and New South Wales in, in Australia produced them on the 1st of January. But by the end of the year, there were another nine places that had produced stamps, such as Lombardy, Saxony, Prussia, Schleswig, Holstein, Hanover, all produced stamps at this time. But certainly during the 1850s, it became more and more widespread and most countries have started using stamps. So there we have it, the first countries to use stamps. I thought it'd be interesting to just go through a few of the countries and a few of the interesting elements about them. By 1860, I think it was estimated that there were 90 countries in the world issuing stamps. And now it's just about every country produces stamps of some sort for their postage systems. There is actually a, I discovered whilst researching this, a website, or actually a group, called the First Stamp Club. And it's where you can find out and collect, if it's your interest, the first stamp of each country that produced them. So if this has interested you at all, look out for the first stamp club and maybe you can find some information. So thank you for listening and we'll be with you again next week for another edition of Our Dad Stamps. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe you've learnt a little too. I would love to hear from you with your tips and stories. I can be found on Facebook and Instagram as Our Dad Stamps, as well as through my online shops at eBay and Delcamp. Listen again next week for another episode of the Our Dad Stamps podcast.